This is the all-new Lexus GX. It's been 14 years since this vehicle was completely redesigned, but I think it may have been worth the wait because this new model is very nice. I think the design is great. It's definitely better looking than the new Land Rover Defender in my eyes, and it now has modern features like an automatic top opening tailgate instead of the side opening one we got on the last generation GX. And while this new GX does share many similarities with the US Toyota Land Cruiser, it is not powered by a four cylinder like the Land Cruiser is. This is a 3.4 liter twin turbo V6 making 349 horsepower and 479 pound feet of torque. This is just a slightly less powerful version of what's in the bigger Lexus LX. And this new powertrain really does help define this GX. This car feels spry and nimble on its feet with this 3.4 liter twin turbo V6. If you're familiar, the new Toyota Land Cruiser for the US is based on this same platform as the GX. That will only be available with a two liter four cylinder feels nice. That will only be available with a two liter four cylinder hybrid iForce Max powertrain, a similar powertrain that is in higher trim level Toyota Tacomas. I was worried that this new GX would get a similar powertrain to the Tacoma and this new Land Cruiser, but it did not. This is a very similar powertrain to what is in the Lexus LX, this GX's bigger brother, and it is so nice. This engine really fits the GX's dynamic and makes it feel like a premium vehicle. I'm currently driving a Toyota Tacoma this week that has a 2.4 four liter turbocharged four cylinder, not the hybrid version that will be in the Land Cruiser, but the non-hybrid version. And that engine is coarse. It is rough. And even with the hybrid uh, system attached to it, like you get in the Lexus RX 500H, that will also be again in the Toyota Land Cruiser, it still is coarse and strained under significant acceleration. This V6 is never strained. Even when you're flooring it, it sounds and it feels good. And I just love this engine. So happy that it is in this GX 550. Flooring it here, engine revs up. Yeah, 479 pound-feet of torque is plenty in this Lexus GX and really moves it off the line very nicely. It feels very refined for this size of vehicle. And the other thing that feels very refined for this size of vehicle and for a body on frame midsize SUV like the GX is, is the ride. It is so supple in here. I am driving a premium plus model. There are six trim levels, two premiums, premium, premium plus, two luxuries, luxury, luxury plus, and two overtrails, overtrail and overtrail plus. So this is the premium plus. And so this has 20 inch rims and it feels so nice and smooth in this Lexus GX. It's also very insulated in here. I'm going 64 miles an hour and it's pretty hushed, even though we do have such an upright dash and windscreen and the ride is just very smooth. I spent a brief amount of time driving the Luxury Plus model, which does come with 22 inch rims, and you definitely do notice the difference in ride quality from Luxury Plus to Premium Plus. There's just gonna be more uh, imperfections in the road that come through the wheels because they are so large on that Luxury Plus model and Luxury model than the Premium and Premium Plus, even though those 22s do look really cool on the luxury models, these premium wheels do lead to a, a nicer ride. It's also very comfortable in here, just like these seats are super comfortable. Leather is very, the leather steering wheel is very nice to grip. You have soft surfaces throughout and it feels very premium here. And finally, the Lexus GX feels like it's in the 21st century. You have a massive 14 inch infotainment system, the upper portion of which is your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto when you have that plugged in. And the lower portion of which is always your climate control so it is your climate control is controlled by a screen you do have two dials to control driver and front passenger temperature so that is nice that you don't have to fiddle with that through the screen but everything else is through the touch screen and then you have a 12.3 inch uh, virtual instrument cluster the higher trim levels also have a virtual rear view mirror and a huge panoramic glass roof this one just has a standard sunroof and a standard rear view mirror but it still feels like a true luxury vehicle in here I'm especially blown away by this suspension, it is very supple, very soft. Uh, I am driving on pretty nice roads right now, but I was just driving through a big empty parking lot that was pretty cracked and bumpy, and it was still very impressive in here. Now around the corners, the GX definitely does have a bit of lean to it, but that makes sense. This is a very tall and somewhat narrow vehicle but I love that the proportions of the vehicle are really felt on the inside. You really do get a sense that you are driving a very capable vehicle. The windscreen is so upright, the dash 
is very flat and these A pillars are very upright. Your windows are pretty square. And I really do like that you do get the sense that it, this is a special vehicle. It is more like Land Rover Defender, a little bit like Mercedes G-Wagon. It does have that sense in here because it is the more off-road oriented, a little more capable of an option for the Lexus three-row midsize SUV segment because there are two three-row midsize Lexus SUVs. The TX, which is unibody based on the Toyota Grand Highlander, and this Lexus G. GX. This is also the only way to get a six-cylinder, three-row mid-size Lexus SUV. Now, the side view mirrors are rectangular, and they are rectangular in a vertical sense, so they are not very wide. They don't really show you too much of your blind spot. You do kind of have to make movements to see what is in your blind spot because of the shape of them. They're pretty uniquely shaped, but they do look really cool, so that's awesome, but you are going to have to be extra careful when you are changing lanes. This does have blind spot monitoring, which which is a huge help to make sure there's nothing hiding back there because you do have a rather big blind spot. And looking over your shoulder, the D pillar of this car is also pretty thick. Here in the second row, sitting behind my ideal driving position, I at six foot two do have enough knee room, foot room, and headroom it's actually quite comfortable back here and if it does look a little tight that is because this is a body on frame vehicle so the packaging isn't going to be quite as efficient as a unibody vehicle like the lexus tx so it is going to be a little cramped back here in comparison to a tx you also do get features like a heated steering wheel dual usb-c charging ports and your own climate control back here. Climbing into the third row, I do actually fit. I have just enough headroom, just enough knee room. My knees are pretty close to my chest, but I would actually be able to sit here for a short journey, no problem. You also can lower and raise your seat from the back of this GX. There is a little button to do that. And it's not very comfortable back here, but it is perfectly usable for a short journey or definitely for kids. Behind the automatic opening tailgate, which is very nice now that there is no longer a side opening tailgate, we're going to find a healthy amount of cargo volume here in the back. And I especially like how low the load floor is, especially for, again, being a body on frame vehicle. Uh, there's a tiny bit amount of storage underneath the floor. You can also raise and lower the third row of seats if you have a GX with third row seats seats automatically from the rear cargo area which is super nice so that you can get these seats up without having to raise them manually and you can see with the third row of seats up it is pretty tight on storage back here you could fit a couple grocery bags but you're gonna get a lot of your cargo volume when you have the seats down. So that's the 2024 Lexus GX. It's got increased capability, great luxury, great looks, and an awesome new powertrain. There's really nothing going against this car other than the fact that it's pretty expensive. It starts at about $63,000 and goes all the way to over 80 grand for a fully loaded luxury plus model. I'm a huge fan of this Lexus GX and I do think it's going to be super successful for Lexus. Thanks for watching, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.